I'm Steve Fricker. I paint with oils on canvas. Uh, it's figurative and it's narrative. So that there is a common and current theme, which uh, actually looking back through it, it, it's kind of, there is a kind of chronology to it, which is uh, kind of surprised me really. But uh, yeah, there we are. So I studied fine art at art school. Uh, when I left, like most people who started fine art, it's problematic. And I kind of fell into illustration, which is kind of one of my interests as well. And I was fortunate enough to get quite a lot of work. And I ended up working for national newspapers, which I did for over 20 years. And the reason I mention that is because I think it kind of links into the way I work. You know, there, there are benefits from that, in not just in terms of imagery, but in terms of having to work quickly. So I got back into painting more and more, got a studio, became interested in rusting machinery. I just found it very interesting, very beautiful to look at and to paint. It kind of led into my, or fed into my interest of objects and our relationship with objects. I, I got into painting still lives. I started making stuff with odd bits of machine or bits of scrap and I'd make them into something kind of like a toy or, or an object you couldn't define and I would paint those like a still life. Then I sort of got into painting still lives with bits and pieces that I found or I'd buy from a car boot. I would also find photographs in car boots which I, I would do a painting of with an object and so it kind of had, they kind of had a narrative of their own. And that kind of morphed into my interest in using children's toys. And it kind of fed back into my childhood. So these old metal toys that had been battered and bashed. And they had a kind of uh, sense of permanence about them. And that kind of got me thinking a lot about our relationships with objects as adults. How important they are. And they become kind of icons. It's as if we need icons and symbols to make life relevant and to read uh, some kind of meaning into life, if that doesn't sound too pompous. Well, I, I think this is um, a fairly good example of, a, of what I'm doing, where I'm at with painting. So it's the, it's the journey, it's a child's toy, the, the, the relationship with the toys and objects, the permanence, and the permanence thing is important, which is why most of the toys that I use are kind of worn and chipped. I think that's quite important. And also it has this um, uh, thing about iconography. This is a sort of a nautical boy with a flag on, but it's about how important that symbolism and iconography are to us all, consciously or unconsciously. Rather than do elaborate detailed drawings, in preparation for a painting. I actually discovered that I was doing interesting stuff, or, or people do interesting doodles when they're on the telephone, making a phone call, and there's a kind of abstraction about that. So I kind of developed that. So now I do an awful lot of scribbling and doodling, uh, because it, it does tap into your subconscious, subconscious and things that you're thinking about. And that's now where my paintings stem from. And I think the thing about using old toy cars or toy, toy trains or toy boats uh, feeds into that and it feeds into that narrative. And that, that's what preoccupies me now and has done for some time. And that, that my last paintings I've been doing for the last few years have been along those themes or that thing. It's evolving sort of style-wise and I think becoming better at painting, which is probably a good thing and a thing to aim for. You know, having said all that, not really knowing where it's going, because if you do, then that's a bit of a killer too, you know, so you have to have that sort of the open door thing. My tools and method of working, I guess, would be called very traditional, because I, I had a kind of fairly traditional education in fine art. I, I use earth colours quite a lot. I mean, you can see that the general palette is fairly subdued. Because I think, you know, if you start off too brightly and too loudly, you've got nowhere else to go. 
So I prefer to use a relatively somber palette with sort of um, highlights or splashes of colour because it gives it more res resonance. Phoenix is great because, you know, there's so many people doing their own practice. And, you know, you clearly bump into people in the corridor and you chat, that's nice, but you can go days without seeing anybody. But then we have our open studios, which is great because everybody gets to see each other's stuff and we get, get to chat and you think, wow, I've never seen this studio before. I've been here four years and not seen that one, you know. So that's good. And there's, there's an energy that's given off by Phoenix, um, which is good. And it's nice to be part of.